and welcome to SSTP 2019. My name is Betty Aldworth. I am the executive director of Students for Sensible Drug Policy. I get to have the best job in the whole world, working with this extraordinary team of staff and you extraordinary humans to end this fucking drug war. We're so glad to have you all here tonight, uh, to have you with us this weekend, to learn together, to create together, to develop new bonds and strengthen old ones, to find your people in this world that increasingly and far too frequently, it just feels real tough to find your people. And so I'm so glad we all get to come together this weekend in order to uh, do that work. I wanna take a moment to uh, talk about how important we are. We as an organization, we as a collection of people, we as folks who are young people standing up for what's right, what is just, standing up for equity in the cannabis industry, standing up for uh, you know, ending the oppression and criminalization of people because of what they choose to put into their bodies, ending the ways that we stigmatize and marginalize people simply because they are people who use drugs. We all know that that is a system built and designed to oppress other humans, other communities of humans, ourselves, to make sure that power dynamics stay in place to make sure that people with radical ideas and radical actions and radical hearts are unable to move their ideas forward because they end up put in cages, either literally in prisons or the cage of stigma. People who use drugs are people who deserve human rights, People who use drugs are people who deserve safety and respect. And we get to create that. We get to create that new world together. And I can't imagine any better group of people to be doing it with. So thank you for being here. <laughs> last year, uh, how many of you were here last year? Cool. So you might remember there was a little bit of wind. There was some stuff, you know, it was hard to get people to the hotel last year uh, because of some crazy inclement weather. And I wound up delivering the Saturday morning keynote um, a little bit by surprise. But I got to talk about something that's really important to me um, and to us as an organization, which is that there is no major social change movement of the last 70 or so years that has been effectuated without a strong and vibrant, empowered and supported student movement. It has taken the engagement of students, the fresh creative minds, the energy of youth in order to push any major social change movement forward. And the drug policy movement needs us now just as much as the civil rights movement needed SNCC, just as much as the anti-war movements needed ca campus protests, just as much as the sweatshop protests of the 90s were, were driven by uh, students at that time. The drug policy reform movement needs us, and it needs us smart, it needs us informed, it needs us activated, and it needs us networked with each other. So I hope that you carry that with you as you are uh, you know, doing your learning this weekend and doing your connecting and figuring out you know, where your people are. We are navigating complexities of a rapidly shifting movement. There are going to be people in this room who have been doing this work for 40 years this weekend. People who have been doing this work since before, around the times that Nixon was initiating the war on drugs as we know it today. Folks who have seen the breadth and depth of the war on drugs and the fight against it. Uh, you know, we'll be joined by Rick Doblin uh, on uh, tomorrow afternoon. We've got Eric Sterling with us, our SSDP's fairy godfather. Can you give a wave, Eric, if anybody wants to? Folks who've been doing this work for, you know, longer than most than many of us have been alive. 
Um, and the nature of the work is shifting so quickly with, with legal cannabis becoming a reality in so many places, with the promise of psychedelics for therapeutics becoming uh, you know, a, a reality uh, through the work that MAPS is doing, with the ways that we are talking about the overdose crisis and responding to it, with the ways that the conversation is shifting at the United Nations, which we'll hear about later. All of these things are shifting really rapidly, and we get to have an opportunity to influence that, to define what a more sensible future looks like. And through the work that we do this weekend, we are going to have that opportunity in, in a very profound way. You're going to learn about what's up in the drug policy reform world. You're going to learn about uh, new ways that you can shift the, the narrative. You're going to learn skills that you can take with you back to your campuses to effectuate these changes more quickly. And you are going to uh, learn that you can, you have a whole network of humans who are ready to support you in that. So uh, I em encourage you to embrace it with the most open arms and open hearts that you can. I want to take a moment to talk about the folks who are uh, supporting this organization, supporting your work, um, who are um, the, the people who uh, spend well over 40 hours a week making sure that all of this continues. As I mentioned, um, I have the best job in the world because I'm SSDP's executive director. Um, and I'm definitely happy to chat with any of you over the weekend about uh, your experiences with our organization and what you'd like to accomplish. Please do not hesitate to say hello, introduce yourself, and let me know what you're up to on your campus. And we have with us our extraordinary team of staff and, uh, and interns and fellows uh, here, um, and almost all of them with us tonight. So uh, here uh, is Jules Hodge, our uh, social media intern from UC Santa Cruz. <laughs> Jake Agliata, our international program coordinator. Lauren Paget is our development director. Lauren is responsible for making sure the funding is here for things like this. The longest running staff member in the history of SSDP, Stacia Kosner. As our deputy director, Stacia is responsible for making sure that the organization actually functions. It's pretty amazing. Uh, next to Stacia is Orshi Ferrer. Or she is our global fellow for Europe. She's visiting uh, from Vienna, where she uh, represents uh, the Youth Voice with the Vienna uh, uh, Non-Governmental Committee on Drugs and is the treasurer there. Um, and a total badass, if you ask me. I mean, listen, it's, it's a stage full of badasses, so that... <laughs> Uh, next to Orshi, we have Elise Zabo. Elise is the Movement Building Fellow for uh, much of the United States. Uh, so many of you already know Elise. <laughs> Marisa Morales, our Global Fellow for Latin America. <laughs> Here from Mexico City. Uh, Rachel Wisner, our Development Associate <laughs> and Events Coordinator. Vilmarie Narlock, our Drug Education Manager. <laughs> Logan Ward, our HBCU intern, who's been investing a ton of time and energy to our racial justice work this year. <laughs> Hannah Purcell, Advocacy Fellow. And uh, Luis Montoya, Movement Building Fellow. I'm actually the only person on this stage who is not an alumni member of SSDP. And so all of these folks have had the experiences that you've had uh, as students themselves and, and are uh, you know, hopefully able to relate to the experiences that you're having on campus uh, and so should be considered resources for you. I hope that you'll take the time to introduce yourselves to them as well if you don't already know them and make sure that you're building that connection point too. I do also want to say that we are deeply disappointed that we had an extraordinary amount of trouble with visas uh, for our students from Africa. 
Um, and uh, among the people who were not able to attain a visa was Moran Falou, uh, who is our global fellow for West Africa, um, and he was not able to join us tonight. So let's uh, send him a bit of love toward West Africa. <laughs> He, cer he certainly knows that we're thinking of him and are uh, missing him very much uh, this weekend. So I want to talk a little bit about what, how we create a culture here of connectedness, of, um, of growth and opportunity for ourselves and each other. And we've talked a lot about in the past and in, in online discussions about calling each other in versus calling each other out. We welcome we embrace, we foster, we try to find dissenting opinion amongst ourselves so that we can do better at learning how to connect with people outside of this room who have dissenting opinions from ours. And so I would like to make sure, I would like to invite you all, if you find yourself feeling as though, you know, you have a, a differing opinion from a person, taking it as an opportunity to hear where they're coming from and share with them, you know, what, why it is that you come from where you come. Uh, there's plenty of writing available about what it means to call in instead of call out. And yeah, there are plenty of, of, of spaces where calling out is what is necessary. In this room though, let's all be committed to each other and to ourselves, to that process of learning, that process of, of exploration, of intellectual and emotional exploration that we get to do together with the notion that we are surrounded by people who will help keep us safe. We can rely on them. We can rely on them for support. We can rely on them to jump in on conversations uh, when it's appropriate. We can rely on them to help us create a space where we can have difficult conversations in ways that are productive and constructive and growth oriented. That's one of the tenets, I think, of how we do what it is we do here. And there are some other things that we do to keep you safe. Um, we do have, and you'll notice on, your, on the first page of your program and on the last page of your program, some notes about community safety. We employ a system of rangers. So staff and volunteers will be wandering the halls in the evenings, making sure that we are policing our own community and not inviting the uh, interference of um, hotel staff or any other authorities. So please make sure that if you are visited by a ranger, you uh, consider that they are coming by in your best interest. Um, if your room is a little too loud or um, you know, if there are times when they approach you, uh, know that the, that is all in the interest of making sure that we are keeping ourselves safe um, without any kind of interference. We also have um, available you know, a variety of, of safe spaces. Um, that we have created uh, throughout the hotel and, and uh, with humans as well, uh, safe humans. Uh, so if you find yourself in a position where you need some safety, you can come to anyone on the stage and we will help facilitate that um, or create that for you. And there are also others in the, in the network who are um, invested in that. So there are folks who have yellow dots on their badges. Those are people who have some sort of appropriate training in order to provide you with support if you need it. That includes doses of naloxone, that includes psychological support, that includes medical support. Um, we have a great deal of support that is built in now to the conference experience, and if you need something, there is going to be somebody who can help you with it. So please be sure to check in with any member of staff or anybody with a yellow dot on their, heart. yellow heart, yellow heart. Is it yellow? It's not even yellow. It's a big sparkly heart. <laughs> I don't know. Great, <laughs> great. So, sure, great, perfect. So, big sparkly heart. You don't need to know their name, just that they have a big sparkly heart. How's that? Um, thank you. I don't know why I got stuck on yellow dot. Um, if you're a big sparkly heart person, will you stand up uh, so that people can get eyes on you and know who you are? Uh, we've got Irina and Kat. Yeah, right? <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, Maddie, where's Maddie? There we are. Uh, and is that the primary crew? Are there, am I missing somebody? Okay, well, and also any member of staff uh, can certainly help with that. Any member of the board can connect you with any of us um, and we'll be sure to uh, help facilitate, you know, whatever it is that, that you're needing in order to, uh, you know, feel like you have the safety 
uh, the safety net around you that you need.